Our focus is now dedicated solely to one of the most advanced goods in Dyson Sphere program, the Quantum Chip. Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Dyson Sphere program in our Alpha Andromeda series. So we have these Casimir crystals being built here now, and we need to get titanium glass underway. Titanium glass is going to require, specifically, glass, titanium, and water. Now we have titanium over here already. I was looking at this right as the last episode ended, and we may be able, let's see what we can pull off here. I think the most straightforward way to deal with this, yes, here we go. We can bring the titanium through here, elevate it by one spot, and then possibly just bring it, let's see, yeah, let's bring it here. couple different ways I can see myself doing this. Yeah. No, no, I'll, I'll do it the way I, I had it originally, and if I need to change it, I'll change it. We're going to use logistics bots a little bit here as well, in a way that's going to be very satisfying to some of you, because there's been a lot of encouragement for me to lean into that mechanic. Some of that encouragement coming from me, some of it coming from the comment section. And getting glass over here is pretty much going to require that I use logistics bots. So let's go ahead and set that up. Then we'll just need to get some water pumps set up. Is this a mixed line? No, it's just... <laughs> See, hydrogen can throw you off sometimes, especially when it's sitting over a body of liquid because the, the light refracts through it differently. Hydrogen is kind of a translucent material and it looked like it was a... looked like maybe more than one material had snuck onto that line, but... It's also not likely, given how close that is to the final terminus of the line. Like, the line wouldn't be moving <laughs> if it was this mixed up that close to the very end of things. It just wouldn't be moving. So, we also unlocked level 3 assemblers, but we're going to need quantum chips in order to make level 3 assemblers. So for now, let me just go ahead and queue up some additional... Oh wait, no, that's not necessary. Here we go. Let's queue up some additional ones of these. That's much better. Uh... I can even argue that I don't need all those to be made, but okay, I'll just let that run in the background. So, I also have these water pumps built, and we will need to bring some water in from, let's say, about here-ish. This is probably a little better. Two, three, perfect. Flawless. All right, so now we have water being brought in here, and this is just going to be water for the purposes of our titanium glass. So the last resource that we need, again, we need three resources. We need the glass itself to be brought in. So I think probably the best way to do this would be, we'll just have, let's put a splitter down. We'll do this the right way. We've done a couple of storages in recent episodes that haven't used the new kind of splitter mechanic. But in this case, we will roll with it, let me think. I'm thinking in terms of where the water is going to need to go. Yeah, I think the water will go around the other side. So this should be safe to do. Let's put that <laughs> famous last words. But then again, we can get away with a little bit of flexibility here in Dyson Sphere Program. That's what makes the game so great. Let's just see if we can make this work the way that it's currently working in my head. Okay, so we've filled that up. Now I want to bring glass and a request from other distributors, and you can see them going to get it right now. That looks like some is being brought as well. So that is just phenomenal. We'll have glass here momentarily. Just an entirely new method of transport that I'm still I'm still adjusting to the fact that that's possible. But I love it. Alright, so let's go ahead and have the glass come here. 
And we might need to increase our glass production to make sure that this production chain stays healthy, but we can totally do that. That's not an issue. So now let's get some titanium glass built. Specifically, I do need to get those in my inventory to build with them. And then... That Casimir crystal does need to go past there. Doesn't need to, but that's where I currently have it set up. Actually, come to think of it, there's probably something better I can do with the placement of that. Yeah. Come to think of it, I should do something a little different. So we're going to lift you up and then come over this way. And we'll just leave it here for now until we're more positive where things are going to go. All right, let's put you here. You are going to make titanium glass. Right, so it's pulling from the titanium and the glass, and now... Oh, this is even better. This might work. Oh, this might work amazingly. Hang on. Can it be? Can it be? It might... It might work. Okay, so hang on. I see what I'm, what I'm going to have to do here. Stop it. <laughs> I stopped it just in time. Did you see that? Holy crap. That was fast. And yes, I am listening to the music. You know I am. Still one of my favorite tracks in Dyson Sphere Program. And we have several more very good ones to begin to listen to as well. So unfortunately, because I didn't quite do that perfectly, I'm going to rebuild this line a little bit, and then we're good. And then this just needs to come this way. Perfect. And now we just do that. And so this is, it's a little bit dicey because I'm kind of cramming them in next to each other. And there's a good ar argument to be made that I should have them staggered rather than just in one single line like this. But if my more recent offline playthroughs of Dyson, Dyson Sphere are any indication, one of the things that I'm going to be doing is having these resources specifically being produced on other planets. Nice, strange matter research is done. So that's going to require our very first particle colliders, but that's a big leap forward right there. Okay, so the question is... It's so eerie how close these two resources look. This is glass, and that's water. They're so close. I mean, obviously the glass is not, you know, it doesn't have the liquid effect on it, but they're very similar in color. They look almost identical. I think I can probably go ahead and add a fourth one of these here, so I'm going to do that just to make sure that we have a good amount of these being produced. I'm going to build a single. That might actually fix that problem. Yes, it does. Perfect. All right, so I can delete a couple of Tesla towers. So now we just need an output line for these, which can kind of perfectly sit right here. Oh my god, that's beautiful. All right. I love when a plan comes together. So with that, look at this. Now this titanium glass, slightly different color glass than what came in. But now that we have both of these resources side by side, we can produce plain filters. Now plain filters require one and two. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to overproduce this slightly because um, it requires more titanium glass than Casimir crystals. But now what we can do is we can have the Casimir crystals come in like this. And I am gonna keep these somewhat 
distant from the rest of the line. I will give these a little bit of space because I want to have some ability to expand here without completely boxing myself in, you know? So let's just... Let's do three for now. And then we'll have... Plane filters. We're going to pull from there, from there, and from there. And from there, from there, and from there. And we need to make sure that you are connected to power. So I'll tell you what, how many more of these do I have? One. I think every four is where they need to go. Perfect. I just wanted to get those spaced properly, so I'm going to delete those. And now we're producing plane filters. So what I need to do is have a storage set up for these. And so I shall. Let's just put the storage fairly innocuously right there. Oh, wait, nope. Again, need to close storage before I start trying to move stuff around. Just trying to make a little bit of space in my inventory. Okay, but now that those are ready... I guess I need to keep those in my inventory, don't I? Okay, and there we go. Plane filters. Now, plane filters will combine with processors, which I already have. Not only do I already have them, but they're literally right here. So that's what's even more extraordinary about our current situation. I do need to... Oh, this is easily solved. So easy. All right. Delete, delete, delete. Let's have another... Well, maybe not right there. Maybe we'll delete a little farther back. Or a little closer in. How about that? Perfect. Saying lack of item, that is a lie. I have plenty, thank you very much. I am getting back into, finally, now that I've had some time to experiment with my new recording software, I am getting back into the backlog of recording. So I know that I had that comment an episode or two back where I was like, let's talk about why it doesn't let us access the things for construction. Like what could be the reasoning for that? Uh, I haven't had the chance to see the responses to those comments yet, but hopefully we've had some good discussion. Okay, so let's now bring these over. Actually, just to be kind of particular about it, we'll come this way. We'll have these cross like so. Delete the last one there. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. So actually what I'll do, rather than have them all go to storage, this is going to be where we produce quantum chips. And I'll go ahead and set up four. Might regret it. We might not be able to keep up with the demands of four assemblers building quantum chips, but I want quantum chips, damn it. So that's what we're going to go for. And let's go ahead and set that recipe. Can't believe we're already this far. So now I just need to make sure that the storage here gets filled with any excess. All right, so it does seem like right now we have a good surplus, very first quantum chip which is produced. So let's go ahead and expand this line slightly. Oh, I don't have any more of those. Just kidding, don't have a good surplus. <laughs> Okay, it'll take a moment to build all seven of those, but 
Pretty soon I would like to go ahead and start automating the production of those just because they take so long to build. We are building up a backstock of information matrices right now. These are information matrices, right? Yes, they are. We're building up a backstock of those because we're not using them, which is always nice. All right, so that's going to take just a moment longer. Not too long, though, because thankfully, remember, circuit boards produce two at a time. It's pretty freaking nice. All right, now we don't have anywhere to output these. And it does definitely seem like I'm going to need to produce more of these in order to satisfy the demands of four production buildings. How's our power situation? Power situation is fine. So, yeah, let's go ahead and prepare for that eventuality. This is kind of... I'm being somewhat cavalier with this. Because now we could need to increase our Casimir production. Now, we could look a little bit at the math right now. So how long does this take to produce? The current recipe takes four seconds there. This recipe takes five seconds. Plain filters take 12 seconds. So in the same amount of time that one of these will be completed, three Casimir crystals, crystals can be completed. That kind of makes me feel better because these can be cranking out Casimir crystals and keeping this line nice and full. Yeah, that makes me feel a lot better actually. And you know what? This is kind of ugly, so we're going to change it somewhat. Make it a bit more aesthetically pleasing by doing this. I love how fast those construction bots are working now. It's phenomenal. All right, so now all I need to do is get some additional storage built for these. We do, however, have a means to use them in, in the manufacturing process, I think, because assembling machine Mark III's require these chips. So that's something exciting as well. I'm just going to set the storage for them, like, right here for now. And then we just need to get them outputting, like so. Whoa, hello. There we go. One, two, three, four. That was a lot. That was a lot, a lot. Okay. So with that in mind, the next thing that I want to do, I'm just going to let those build for a moment and see how this does. It does seem like we're struggling to get the plane filters over there which is not surprising. One of the ways that we can help with this though is using proliferation. And we're currently not able to fully proliferate. Hang on, what are we short on? We're not short on anything. It just, you know what? Screw it. If plane filters are what we're short on, let's just do more assemblers making them. Let's see if we can increase the production speed of those. So proliferation is the next thing kind of on my radar. Wow, look at that chain. That's fantastic. We have Mark III Proliferator Paint, and Mark III Proliferator Paint also uses a key resource which isn't really being used by anything else right now, which is this. So we have this just terminating here, and I think what I want to do, the most straightforward way to do it would be to have these brought by transportation drone, given how far they are apart. So we're going to have a secondary storage here. I already have a big storage tower, but I don't mind a big buffer in this case. So this is going to be a supply point for these. And it's going to start emptying out from this storage into this storage. Apparently it says we have one of these. I wonder... Oh yeah, because they're all moving. Okay, so they're currently bringing 
or they're, rather they're off-putting. Let's let's see how we're doing here. They're flying it over here. God, I love seeing the transports just arrive. All right, so they're bringing it in relatively small quantities. I don't like how it's, it seems like we don't have a ton of that. That's going to be one of the resources that we need. But let me stay focused for now on what I've just set up, and then we'll come back maybe and take a look at that when we're done. Because particle broadband, we need that you know, in larger quantities than we're currently producing. So, graphene, I think. Let's go ahead and grab some of the things we need here. Uh, we need computer chips. We need steel. I don't have steel on me, but that can very easily be rectified. There's some steel right here. Two massive containers of it. Matter of fact, I meant to set this like so, so that we're not pulling as much over there. I did it just to one container, I guess. <laughs> the more you know. All right, let me grab some titanium from here. Just right-clicking and dropping that in. And now we can build... Yeah, we'll just build four of them. Why not? But over here, we're going to build a new station. We already have 106 of these. That's fantastic. Let me go ahead and grab them. I have some hydrogen on me. Let me drop off some of the goods that I have that I can safely get rid of. There's the planetary logistics station. I'm gonna fly over here just for a moment because I still have all that extra graphene that I can drop off with the chemical facilities that are making carbon nanotubes. There we go. All right, can't do anything here. I'm not carrying anything more. Notice, by the way, this this is already full. That's how fast that filled up. So this is now filling up again. We're just going to need to burn some of our energetic graphite. That's what it's going to come down to. But we'll address that later. So we've got this built. We have four of them built, in fact. So... going to need to come over here. And probably I will just need to do a little bit of landfilling. Not an issue. Let's just create a bit of a landing pad there. Perfect. Okay. And then right there. Connect it to the power grid. Do I have shuttles already? Yes, I do. I want to just grab 10 of these and pop them in there. And now I just want to have carbon nanotubes set to demand, and they are going to get it. So now that we have that, see, this is kind of handy because it will help consume some of our graphene. So right now... This is very interesting. We have so much being proliferated through this area here, but now what I would like to do... Yeah, a lot's about to change here. I'm going to delete that entirely. And that line will be where the final line goes. But this line here is just going to be for that proliferator paint. But we have a new step that we're adding, so we're also going to delete this, bring it back to about here. We now need to build some additional... Let's go ahead and do three, because we have three of the first two. We'll 
One, two, three. One, two, three. And this is going to be for Mark Three Proliferator Paint. And then I think probably the best way to do this will be like so. placement of that tower slightly interfering with my clicks there, but now we have level 3 proliferator paint, and what I will do, I'm going to delete that, so we don't need it anymore. Kind of a big deal, what's happening here. This is going to increase power consumption a good bit, but now we're going to start outputting level 3 proliferator paint onto the line here. So it's going in all the places, it's going in all the directions that it was going before, with one exception, which we can quickly remedy by doing this. Let's go ahead and bring it in like so, and then across, and then down. All right, so this is going to be this will be interesting to watch because I don't know if we're producing it fast enough yet. We'll just have to see. I mean, we have it looks like the new proliferator paint is already affecting the coal coming in, which is great. That's really really positive. So that's affecting the production of level 1 proliferator paint. Let's take a look at our power situation. Definitely seeing, you know, we, we still have a nice surplus, but we need to keep an eye on that. I don't know. I kind of feel like we can do more than what we're currently doing. It seems fairly obvious that we can. So let's do this. I want to remove the sorter previews. Oh, I don't have one. Really? I already built all of them that I can possibly build. Yes, I guess I did. Right? I just need to get an additional stack of these, and I'll be fine. Okay. I can only build one, but one is all I need. I just want to see if we can start stacking this stuff a little bit more rapidly, because right now it seems like we're not producing a lot of it. Not the prettiest setup here, but it's going to work. Alright, so that's a slight increase. Is it enough? I guess the question is, is it backing up over here? It doesn't... Yeah. Yeah. There's not really a lot of paint coming down. Okay, there it is. It's starting to back up here. So that's a good sign. Because if it's starting to back up here, it will event it will will eventually, holy crap words, it'll eventually back up across the entire line and we'll be fine. Definitely starting to see the green paint emptying out. That could actually slow down the rate at which it backs up to. So I'll have to I'll have to be mindful of that. But we are approaching the 30 minute mark here and that's some good progress. So let's go back over here before we end, before we finish entirely. Proliferator should help with just about everything. Let's see how we're doing here, 156. That's a good start. So we're gonna be able to use that in addition to, I mean, the next thing we need to do, as I mentioned coming back to it after the proliferating stuff was done, we need to take a look at the production of carbon fiber, basically. Or, not carbon fiber, but particle broadband. So, particle broadband is not really being produced rapidly enough, but it looks like 
yeah, it actually seems as though I have most everything I need. I might need to produce carbon nanotubes more because I only have three chemical plants working it right now and I'm probably going to need more than that. Probably a lot more, in fact. At least three more over here is what I'll currently angle for. And that could increase the rate at which these are being produced, but we'll also need to just add more of these, maybe double the number of particle broadband producers. And once we have that, those two things combined together are what we need. We need a lot of particle broadband, holy crap, to make assembling machine Mark III's, which are, of course, again, another major efficiency upgrade because they're a 50% bonus over the assembling machine Mark II for everything that we're making that requires assemblers, including the particle broadband. That's a nice increase in speed. Provided you keep in mind that there's also going to be an increase in power consumption. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If it's not your first time or even your second, look for the join button to access unique emotes, badges, and other perks. New episodes are coming out every day at noon U.S. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.